One thing that kind of got me a little bit is when I walked around Melbourne for the first day. I was walking around Melbourne City and I was like, oh yeah, I'm here, mama, I'm here. I hope no one takes offense to this, but all I saw were... But all I saw were people of Asian descent. Whether it was Vietnamese or Chinese or Korean, that's like all I saw. The stores, you know, it was like Asian food. A lot of the people walking down the street. I was a little like confused because I'm just like, huh? I thought I came to Australia. But again, there goes the beauty in, ex in traveling and experiencing and exposures because now I realized how diverse Melbourne itself was, This, especially CBD, which is the central business district. I'm here making stuff up, but that sounds like a good name for it. Um. If you haven't seen them yet, go check out part one and two of my travel experiences in Australia and then come back and check out this one. And don't forget to click on that subscribe button stereotyping in Australia as a black person when I got there it was automatically assumed that I was African I was from Africa I just flew from one of the countries in Africa I got Kenya a lot and then I also got Nigeria and Ghana I remember on one occasion this guy asked me so where are you from and I told him I'm from Florida and he was like oh yeah which part of Africa is that in <laughs> And now um, I had to explain, you know, no, I'm from the U.S. So I visited Canberra, which is the capital, and that's where I saw the kangaroos and wildlife. We stayed in a cabin and got to talk to some Aborigines, learn about the history of Australia and how, you know, the treatment of dark-skinned people was very similar to the slave trade here. It just seems, it's just quite interesting how people of color have been degraded and belittled in all parts of the world. So that was a little, you know, that was like a wake up call for me and realized that this issue of racism is not just in America, it's something that is actually an issue on a global scale. I did have a mom ask me to take a picture with her daughter. Um, and this was a Caucasian family. I guess her daughter had never seen someone who was black before. And her mom was just like, yeah, she's just like us. Yeah, you've never seen someone who's dark skin, but look, see, like they're just a human just like us. And I actually appreciated that. I didn't mind taking a picture with her. And apart from that, after people found out that I was actually American, they, I want to say accepted me a little bit more. There were a lot of refugees from Sudan. And one of the things that I learned is that so the Sudanese students, they really, they like to travel in groups. Anytime they would go out there and be in like groups of five or 14, like really big groups and they would be loud and kind of rowdy. And a lot of the locals there didn't like that. And so a negative kind of stereotype was formed around people who were straight from Africa. I like, I, I hope when people are watching this, the distinction that I'm making between being black, African-American and African, I know that I'm from Africa. I know that my ancestors were brought over here on slave ships and were from Africa, but I was born and raised in America. So I do identify as a black African American. My experience there is that when people assumed I was African and I let them know that I was actually American, they treated me a little differently. Well, the stereotypes that they have around the African culture was not applied to me and more so now I became an American and that was something that was a little bit more acceptable for them. So that's something that I experienced um, and it's not necessarily a good thing. It's not like I don't feel like it's a win for me because you know we're all black and at the end of the day we all experience some sort of racial injustice at some point in our life.
but I must say that out of all the countries that I have been to, Australia was probably one of the most accepting of me, of my culture. My experience there was quite pleasant. I was welcomed by Africans. I was welcomed by the local Australians. I realized how diverse Melbourne is and I think that's why I enjoyed it so much because I was able to meet so many different people similar to New York, but obviously it was Australia so and I'm grinning from ear to ear because this was by far the most awesome experience I had and I hope that if you are thinking about going to Australia one make sure that you give yourself enough time two weeks minimum to travel and see a lot of what Australia has to offer Two, save your coins do not spend money on clothing do not spend money on shoes spend money on experiences souvenirs bring the souvenirs back you know like when you're traveling over there don't pack too much in your suitcase because you're going to want to leave space in your bag for souvenirs because when would you ever get the chance to go back to australia australia so far the plane tickets are so expensive so just be smart about what you spend your money on and souvenirs like get tons of souvenirs even if you can't think oh i don't know who i'll get this for not gonna get it take it okay so those would be my two tips when traveling to australia i do hope you enjoyed this video thank you for sticking around to the end and hearing a little bit about my experience <laughs> Howdy! No, wait, no, that's not what they say. Good on you. Yeah, that's what they say. Good on you. Bye, everyone.